Hi students, okay. In uh, yesterday, the TS SPDCL exam is happened. In this TS SPDCL exam, what are the different questions came from electrical machines? We are going to discuss now, okay. We are going to discuss now. Let's start the session. The first question they given is a synchronous motor is rated with 100 kVA and 10 kV and the reactance is 33 ohms. The percentage reactance of the motor is given. So they are asking in terms of per unit values. We know that uh, base value we need to find out. Zb is equal to kVb square by MVA three phase. This is the base value. Then uh, x per unit can be written as Z actual, uh, sorry, x, they are asking in terms of x, uh, x actual by Z base. This is the per unit value. Since they are asking in percentage, we need to multiply with 100. Okay, percentage if you want to get, you need to multiply with 100. By substituting this, uh, what you will get? Uh, by substituting uh, given values, uh, we will get uh, x percentage x is equal to 3.3 percent. This is a uh, simple question only. Okay, by substituting the given values there, we can get the x is equal to 3.3 percent. The option is B. Okay, the electrical machines are designed to have maximum efficiency at. Uh, Maximum efficiency. If you take any machine, either transformer or DC, DC machine or induction machine, you will get maximum efficiency when it is near to full load. When it is near to full load. Okay, we can see the efficiency curves of different machines. We will get maximum efficiency near to full load. When it is at full load, again efficiency will get reduced. But when it is nearer to full load, the efficiency will be high. We can observe from the transformers very clearly where you can draw the efficiency curves. Okay, efficiency curves. Let's take example of efficiency. It will be like this. Okay, efficiency like this. This is the maximum efficiency is the full load will be like this. This is the full load condition. This is the half load condition, half full load. Okay, this is the maximum condition, maximum efficiency condition. So that is a near to full load. Option will be C. Next question. Okay, yes, DC shunt motor connected to 220 volt DC supply it takes a line current of 11 amps. It has a armature resistance 0.2 ohms and the field resistance 220 ohms. What is the generated EMF or back EMF they are asking? Just uh, draw the DC shunt motor circuit. For the given values, DC center motor circuit for the given values like this. Okay, this is the back EMF, this is the field resistance, this is the armature resistance. They given line current as 11 amps, they given and supply voltage as 220 volts and resistance also 220 ohms. Okay. This is the given where they are asking about EB. They are asking about the EB. So, first we need to represent the given terms in a circuit diagram. From this circuit diagram, we can calculate the field current. So, no, we know same voltage will come across the field also. So, our ISH is going to be 1 amps. So, our field is taking 1 amps. So, by applying KC like this, so the current, the armature current will be 10 amps. Okay, we know the KVL equation for a given motor, Vt is equal to Eb plus IARA, Eb plus IARA, from this you can write Eb is equal to Vt is 220 minus IA is 10 into RA 0.2, okay, 220 minus 2, we will get 218 volts, the option is A, the option is A, the next question. 3 phase 6 pole induction motor on a full load runs at 920 rpm. It supplied a 4 pole alternator running at 1500 rpm. Calculate the full load slip. Okay, calculate the full load slip. First, we note down the slip formula. Slip is equal to Ns minus Nr by Ns, where Ns is 120F by P. Where Ns is 120F by P, but where F is the supply frequency. If the motor is running from the alternator, uh, the frequency depends on the alternator only. Okay, first we need to found the first we need to found the supply frequency. Supply frequency for alternator. Let's take uh, Ns of alternator can be written as 120 F by P. Okay, they given the four pole alternator running speed. Speed and poles they given. Speed is 1500 rpm and uh, frequency we need to found from here and poles are four four numbers. Okay, 
so uh, from by simplification you will get uh, f is 50 hertz f is uh, 50 hertz okay now we need to found out uh, they given the nr the rotor speed given but we need to find out the synchronous speed of the rmf rotating magnetic field okay with the help of the frequency by substituting this we will get ns is equal to 120 into f is 50 and the poles of this induction machine are 6 6 less so the option will be 1000 rpm okay 1000 rpm so ns we know and nr we know for simplifying we will get 1000 minus 920 divided by 1000 it will be 80 by 1000 it's like 0 0.08 by simplifying we will get a slip as 0 0.08 next question a 12 pole induction motor is fed from a 100 hertz supply if the frequency of the rotor emf is 2 hertz find the load speed find the load speed okay first write down the given data they given the uh, rotor emf frequency we know rotor emf frequency will be sf rotor emf frequency will be sf okay f is the supply uh, supply frequency frequency of the supply okay so what and all they given uh, they given the rotor emf frequency as 2 hertz uh, and supply frequency 100 given find the full load speed they are asking for finding the speed we need a slip first so from the given data we will collect uh, we will calculate the S. Okay, S is equal to 2 by 100. It will be 1 by 50. That means 0 0.0. 0 0.0. 2 0 0.0. Okay, we will get 1 by 50 means 0 0.02. We know the S now. S is equal to 0 0.02. In order to find the rotor speed, what they are asking? Rotor speed at nr is equal to ns into 1 minus s. We need ns also required. For calculating rotor speed, ns also required. ns is equal to 120 f by p. Our frequency they given 100 and poles they given 12. Okay, so the, the speed will be 1000. Okay, 1000 into 1 minus 0 0.02. We will get 1000 into 0 0.98. So, the speed of the motor will be 980 rpm. The speed of the motor will be 980 rpm. Option is B. It is very simple. Just observe that they given the rotor EMF frequency. From that, we calculate the slip. And they given the number of poles and frequency. You can calculate the NS. If you know the slip and NS, we can calculate the NR. Okay, next question. What they given three phase three single phase transformer each 100 kV rating are connected in delta. If one of the transformer is taken out, uh, taken out of service due to some uh, some reason, the capacitor of the system will be okay. They are asking the whole capacitor of the system. We know that uh, whenever delta delta connection one unit failed, one unit failed means it is going to be VV connection. That means open delta. So we have the formulas in open delta. Capacity of capacity shared or capacity of in VV connection at the rate VV connection capacity of each each unit capacity of each unit is equal to 0.866 into KV of single phase transformer. Okay, that is the key. each unit is equal to 0.866 into KVA, what the KVA given 100, so 0 0.866 into 100, if you do, you will get 86.6, but only one unit only left, you have two other units, so total capacity they are asking, so total capacity equal to, in VV connection, total capacity become 2 into 86.6, the answer will be 173.2 KVA. Okay, the answer will be 173.2 kV. It is very simple. In a delta delta transformer, one of uh, one of the single phase unit is over, uh, taken out of the service. Then it will act as a VV type. So in VV type, we know the formula. This is very very important. We know the formula. From this formula, we calculated the capacity of the VV. Capacity of the VV. Total capacity of the VV. Okay, answer is B. Okay, next question. 
The efficiency of a 65 kVA transformer is 0.96 at full load as well as half load. For this transformer at the load, full load copper losses is. Just to remember the efficiency formula. Sorry, efficiency curve. Efficiency curve like this. The efficiency curve, is, they didn't mention about any power factor. But they are asking about losses and efficiency. With respect to losses and efficiency, this is the losses. These are the losses versus efficiency. We might have drawn the different characteristics in transformers. So, it will be like this. This is the when iron loss equal to copper loss. And this is copper loss is less than the iron loss. Here, copper loss is more than the iron loss. Okay. This region, this region is like this, this region is like this. What they are telling uh, the same frequency at 0.96. Okay, let's take it is the efficiency 0.96%. Okay, this is a uh, half full load, and uh, wherever it is intersecting, it is full load condition. So, where they are asking the losses at the, at the rate of full load, what is the relation between copper loss and iron loss? So, from this curve, what you can say? The copper losses are more than the iron losses. So, copper losses is more than the core losses or iron losses. Okay. By this, we completed the different questions came in the electrical machines in TS SPDCL. Thank you.